All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. We've got an absolute banger tonight. We have Stuart Bannigan. A banger? A banger. <laughs> I'm not a banger. An absolute <laughs> banger of a podcast tonight. Sorry. What Sorry. a start, man. Welcome to the Bishop Briggs Academy oh, podcast because I'm sick of getting people to wait at Bishop Briggs I know, Academy. Man, I know. Who was on last night? Oh, we've had what? He's on it. Nicky, we've got me. Nicky we've Devlin. Had Nicky Devlin. We've got you. Um, who else did we have? Did something bad somebody else for you? Well, we had, well, it'd be fair, we had Kieran in here and all mine that did. But I think because we spoke about other people, because Sean McDonald was doing yeah, yeah. podcast and was Darn, Darn, uh, Darn was doing them and that and all. I just realised so. I did call you a banger. That's I know. Like... <laughs> 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 Sorry, those bushy boys no, can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody, welcome to the next episode of the podcast. We have an absolute banging podcast here tonight with Stuart Banning and Apartic Thistle. Um, before we start, as always, a wee shout out to our podcast sponsor, McTassos Giros. Get down and see them at the Fort and Kelvin Way. Best grab about you ever had one? Oh, I don't know, I crack. They're amazing, crack, man. Easiest, easiest sponsor to have ever because you just tell them how good they are. He's been by Sean Briggs and all. <laughs> well, ta- Taz is, ca- Taz is, he's kind of, but Taz is kind of by roads way, isn't he? Aye, well, aye. But, um, oh, look, man, we're delighted to have you on, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. I think uh, first Hall of Famer we've ever done. Yeah, well, he's no Hall of Famer yet. No, yeah. yeah. If I have a nightmare on Saturday, I'll probably get put. No, I don't. I don't know to send it. I don't. <laughs> oh, no. I don't know to send it. After a couple of relegations in a row, they're still going to give you one. So there's no way to send it. I know you're talking about. But see, you get into the Hall of Fame. I know you. I don't know if you were going to go back to it, but how do you get into it? Do you need to make a certain amount of appearances, or do the fans just vote for it? I didn't know. Well, apparently, back years ago, you had to make. I think it was three hundred or more. Right. Um, but I think they've scrapped that now because Chris Erskine get in. He was about 280 or something. I think it just depends on how, how you're seen by the fans, what you've won, stuff like that. Um, but it's a big, a big honour for me. Brilliant, mate. Um, what an honour. And it doesn't, you know, a few people have said to me that I've been in it, a few of my pals, uh, Erskine and Dylan and that. Say it's probably one of the best things that can happen in your career. So, um, no, I'm looking forward to it. I'm a wee bit nervous about it all, but um, no, it'll be a good night. Good night. To uh, ex-junior boys there too. Aye. 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 Chris Dylan gave me the hardest game I've ever had in my life. We were actually playing against Chris's team in a couple of weeks in Caddox in the Cup. Mm. was a cracking player. A nah. weird one because he didn't think he, he wasn't big. He wasn't really the quickest. But you know, he's all, just always in the move. Touch was brilliant. First touch was When amazing. I played against him, it was at Talbot, and it was probably maybe only a couple of months before he went to Thistle. And it's one of the few times, I think it's only happened to me about two or three times, I remember thinking, I need to get taken off. <laughs> I was like, this is horrific, yeah. man. I remember it was a... I came down at uh, Beachwood. I had to rush late for my work. I nearly missed the game. Let's start and get down there late. Came on and he just battered the life at me. Yeah. And it was horrendous. Yeah. Played against Chris Erskine when he was at Coburnley. That wasn't as hard. But Dool's absolutely destroyed me. Well, that's why he's made the step up, wasn't it? Nah, it's... It's a good else. advert, isn't it, for the junior boys as well? So they can... Ah. There is 100% of players that could easily, ah. easily step up. But Hang it's just... It. There's a lot, a lot of boys do financially well playing at this level. Ah, so of course they've got their jobs in that and it's fine. Instead of being a League 2 or lower half League 1 player, 100%. you can go and get yourself good money, £800,000 a week playing for Darvo, <laughs> and then you can you can enjoy it, you know what I mean? But look, enough of that, enough of that. As I always say, the episodes will go back to the start. You started with Ross Vale, yep. went to Hearts for a wee spell, yep. and then Selic. You were at Selic for what, about four years? Yep. How was, how was that at that time being in at Celtic? Oh, amazing, so young. amazing. Uh, I remember getting, I was playing a tournament at Hearts. The Celtic scout was was at the tournament. And as soon as Celtic come, you know, they're young boys, or Celtic fan, I was younger, uh, younger, sorry. You want to be, you, know, you want to go and play for Celtic, even though it's such a, a young age. But um, it was amazing. I went all over the world to be them. Ended up in Qatar, uh, you know, Belgium, France, Italy, playing all these tournaments. And it's lifetime memories. Um, but I was only there for, for four years, ended up getting... Getting released it, uh, they jumped from under 15s to, to 17s. They, they thought I was a wee bit too small. Who was it, Selig, at that time? Was, that, was Forrest? Uh, been a year couple older. Of years younger. Uh, older, years. sorry, I. Uh, my age would have been guys like uh, Big Louis Toshney played, mm-hmm. um, Mark McNulty. Mm-hmm. Um, I think who else played? Um, Keats here, James Keatons. Mm-hmm. He played as well. Uh, Carl McGregor came up for the year below. So a few boys that are still, still doing all right and still playing at a decent level. How did you find that? We've spoken about this quite a few times where we've been at that that kind of level where you're pro youth as it was in our time and you're getting into possibly going senior. How was that getting knocked back for Celtic 
like you said, you're a Celtic fan growing right. up. You've been there for four years. In your head, you're hoping that that's going to be you to get opportunity. And you look at, I'd imagine you probably didn't look at ball boy Champions League matches oh, yeah. or stuff yep. like that. Oh, yeah. You're yep. seeing all that. You're seeing the top players at the club. How was that for you, no getting that opportunity? Did you think you weren't going to get it? Or did you feel quite aggrieved by it? I was gutted. I was gutted. Um, but I'm one of my harshest critics. So I kind of had a feeling. I think you always kind of know. Um, I was playing. I was left at a right mid back then. Tiny, very skinny, no really much pace, no skill really at all. Um, so I don't know if I was played out of position uh, back then. It didn't quite help me. Um, but all in all, when I look back at it, I probably wasn't good enough to make a step up there. And it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me, getting released for there and, and finding um, you know, another club. You moved on to Thistle at that point. How did Thistle come about? Did you know somebody or did they just approach no, you? No, well, it's <laughs> ended up. I did play for a wee while when I left Celtic, probably about maybe half a year or something like that. Playing with my mates, um, amateur team down at the Fur Hill Complex. And just so happened, Thistles under 17s were on the other half of the pitch. And ended up joining me It's mad, I remember, Stuart, when we were younger, weren't we? Aye, aye. We used to come down, we used to have a, a big bit of grass out in our bank, and Stuart was probably with. One of the boys stayed across the road face, so we used to come down. I remember that you yeah. were how small you were, not that. Aye. And it was mad that you went for But people grow at certain at different mm. times, and um, you know, just it's one of these things that, that happened to me at that point, but probably a blessing in disguise. It's mate, it's, it's heartbreaking for people, and I love, how, I love how you're seeing it. It's one of the best things that happened to you because I think that's important what the young team need to realize now. Don't, don't, don't think that your dreams are. When you just don't make it for a well, Celtic well, Rangers, well, I mean, they're, 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 they're you going in and your Saturday, you're going to have a big day and get inducted into the Hall of Fame at your club, you know what I mean? And doesn't matter what anybody says, that's that's something for you for life now, do you know yeah, what I mean? There's that, plenty of clubs out there. Um, you'll get chances at maybe the other clubs that you wouldn't get at, at a Celtic or Rangers because they're, um, you need to be exceptional mm -hmm. to get into the, even breakthrough at the first team. You might get an odd game here or there, but to stay there and, and play. Um, <coughs> sorry, you, you need to be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's all about your perspective of how it is. Like in terms we you struggled with quite a bit. You've said before when when Thistle and you ended up kind of not getting kept full time. Mm -hmm. I had my year full time at Clyde, and I left before I knew I knew I was going to get released, but I left before that and went junior, and it didn't bother me too much because I actually realised that I didn't have a mental strength to play full time football. Like I, I actually struggled during the week at training because at the time when I was there, it was like Dougie Emery and all that. And mm -hmm. They were only like three or four year old on us. So our first team was so young. We were like 17, 18 and they were all 21, 22. And it was one of the ones where I just found it so difficult mentally. Mm -hmm. Where no, if I was to go back, I'd be different. But I, I suppose it is your perspective where you've went and played amateur. Well, that would do a lot of boys in after it where they go, oh, I was at Celtic. Yeah. I was this and I was that. And your ego gets in your way. Yeah. But You've ended up. How I wasn't. I wasn't looking for it, and you know what I mean. I wasn't. I wasn't looking for thistle. It, it was just there, and I ended up just going to play. I don't know what would have happened if, you know, down the line, I was still playing amateur a year later. I don't know what what I would have done. These wee things seem to pop up in your life that you, yeah. you know, wee moments that you take and you fly for them. How was your thistle team? Use one. Did you use win the youth cup? Won the youth thistle? cup under nineteen's eye. Um, a few of the boys played in the first team with this one. We had five or six through. The coach was um, Ian Cameron. He was a brilliant guy, unbelievable coach. Um, and you know, a few of the boys got their, their debut, which is all you can ask for. And um, I think we played Livingston in the final, a, a three-two win. Um, they had a few boys, the Jacobs brothers, a few of them yeah, played yeah, that yeah. day, and um, but quite a strong team. So that was a, a sort of good start, in my my youth career. You've moved into the first team very young. I actually seen something you were talking about, um, and I'll touch on it when we talk about when you went here. Where you were saying when you left there you went back to Thistle and you wanted to you were like I'm right. wanting to play. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking no, possibly because again perspective changes as you get older. You're 17, 18 year old. That is just a boy that's a baby in football terms. Yeah, you're yeah. just a boy. <laughs> How did you feel moving into the first team and training full time with men for the first time properly in your career? I thought it was miles off it. Mm. Honestly, miles again, quite small still. Very skinny. You look back at the pictures when I made my debut and that, and I know the, the strips were bigger, but you look at yourself and 
a wee guy. Aye. Unbelievable. And you're looking, I don't know if it's just the time they knew, but looking at teams back then, they were all men, weren't they? All the players, all Aye. the, they weren't they? they were, it was, it was strange looking at guys, David Rousen played hundreds of games, I was looking at him because he was a midfielder for Thistle. Like, no, I'm nowhere near it. I'm nowhere near it. Um, you just need to keep plugging away and it's, it's wee bits of luck. You need to grab it at the right time and, um, you know, luckily for me, it, it happened. See, see, when did you get, when did you get shifted? See, when you went to Fissel and that, did, did, did then somebody see in you and go, I think you're better in the middle of the Aye, park? Uh, under seven, as soon as I went to uh, Thistle, under 17s, the guy Ian Cameron, straight away into the, into the centre mid. So he just put you straight Aye. in, he's obviously Aye, seen that, mid, Aye, um, cause I, I know my own strengths and weaknesses. I, I'd need pace to play in the wing. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not getting any pace, you need that wee bit of trickery to go by somebody, a wee bit of skill. I was, I'm quite a basic player. I, I keep it simple and try and get my teammates involved. So, um, it was a stroke of genius really for him to, to put me in there. And it's a, I love the position you want to get involved in. Everything, so it's, it's crack. Did you take to right away or did you have to get a bit of proper coaching? Um, no, I think I took to it pretty well. Um, I don't know about my own trumpet rating, but I, I took to it pretty well. And, um, I played at that level, sort of a step down from the Celtic youth to Thistle, um, probably was the best thing to bed me in, you know what I mean, for a wee bit of confidence. You made your debut against Clyde in the Challenge Cup, or oh, was it the Challenge Cup start would have been aye, aye, would have been, yep. How did it go for you, because you came on late as a sub? Uh, I think it was about 70 odd minutes or something, I think you're just happy to even get on, um, just running about, you're mad, not really, <laughs> not really, it's Can like, uh, it you know, the, and you know, you're just running about. Nah. Um, hoping to get a touch. Don't think I've done much. Never done it in rang. Never done it in brilliant. Um, just happy to get the, the debut. Did you have a? Did because we spoke to Nicky and you know, that when when Nicky Lowe yeah. was on and that, and he was talking about his debut. Did you have a wee feeling that you would have got a wee taste of the action? No, then, I honestly didn't. Did no, it I don't come think right I did. The blue for you? No, it wasn't the blue because you're in the you're in the, the bench anyway. So it's what probably six boys you can get on. I think it was three subs at the time. So you're hoping you're going to get a wee sniff either at the teams winning and dominating. You get a chance because the game's aye, done anyway, aye. but I don't know what the score was. I think we might have two 0 or two one. They put me on in the last twenty. What were you then... like after it? Because I know when we spoke to Nicky, spoke to him after it, and he was saying how buzzing he was and all no, that. Just like I can't imagine. Like I've played football and been involved in football for a long time, but I've never made a like a senior debut. You know what I mean? So, what were you like after that? I don't know. I, I can't really remember. I obviously you're buzzing to play and you're. Your mum and dad are there and all that and it's brilliant. But you're just focused on trying to get in again and it's that's what you the way you've got to be. You've got to I heard something the other week, somebody was talking about football and it's proving yourself every week, it's mental. It's an addition every week. You need to keep going and going and going. Um and because I get my debut, I wasn't I you know, didn't rest on that. I wanted to get into the team and start every week. That was the next Aye. one. Um didn't happen for a wee while, but uh, that was the that was the goal. I think it's helped that you're so grounded. When you're young. You've never been a big time, have you? No, know, you've no, always been no, so I grounded, be, and nah, even the way you're talking, the new. Do you think that's um, how you're. Ah, you've, you've got to work for it. Um, you've got to work for it, and you know, there's nothing worse than a, a big time guy, is there? And you're nah, just looking at going, what are you talking time, about? Man. I suppose um, at 17 and all, when you move up, you maybe have played reserve football and stuff. You played 19 reserve football, and you go on the bench a few times. You probably just think, well, that's just the next thing, is. We're looking at it now, you're still playing obviously, but now you're, what, you're 30 now? 30, just on 30, aye. So, we're a bit older, and you look at it and you're like, you maybe look back and say, well, that's such an amazing thing that you've done, but at that time you're, prob you're probably aye, thinking, you're the, that's just aye, the next thing that aye, I aye, do aye. now. Fanzo's one of the players, he's, he's only 30, man, you think he's been a bit forever. <laughs> yeah. Somebody thought I was 40, still, though. It's still got a hang with it, I mean, you've still got about a good few so. years in you. hope so, aye. Hope still so. can still add to that appearance, Tally. See when you first broke into Fisso, I remember when I was at I was at Fisso and, and hopefully a couple of Fisso, like, there'll be a couple of Fisso fans that'll watch us, but did they still do the young boys in the bottom dressing room and the aye senior aye. players oh, in the tap? So when you made it was mate, you had to walk up the stairs, not oh, the senior aye. boys. When did you get up that stair? Uh would have been probably wasn't it when I made my debut anyway, you're still in the young boys dressing room. Um Probably a couple of years after that. Aye. And even then. Was that, it Chico and Ricky? Were they? Oh, I they were there. Legends, there at the time? Legends, oh, loved them. Loved them, man. Loved they them. were the kit men, PG, mate. You've actually seen these two characters, mate. Oh, loved them. Brilliant guys, mate. Amazing guys. Bonkers, Amazing. mate. What was that first? Talking about that, because obviously everybody knows, you know, particularly with 
the Chico where it was like, what was that dressing room like at that time? Because we speak about it, we spoke about it earlier about how it feels like it's proper men. Mm -hmm. What was it like getting into that dressing room? I never spoke time? to him. I swear I never spoke. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't. I was getting shyness just shy because you're no, you've not done anything to deserve to, to speak. But you see, I see young boys now and they're, they're just they're bold. Oh, they're, they're, oh, hey, they don't care. <laughs> but I've got a wee bit of respect for it as well because you know what? Fair enough to them. Um, but that wasn't me. I was shy. Spoke when you know, spoken to, um, and, and that was it. And just sort of bed my way in. But I was never, as you say, I've never any big time shots for me or anything like that. I would just go in, train my hardest, see what happened because you'd need to deal with. The first team boys can be harsh on you. They can Aye. be. Aye. Um, and as soon as some a young boys know doing it and training well, they're on them. You know what I mean? Big time. And that's what you need to deal with. So it's... um. I was... What was going down, back. man? What, what opened your eyes, man? Surely there was some fucking heavy duty stuff going down. Uh, oh, no, just that when I went to air loan, so I didn't really play consistently. Aye. Went to air loan and... Um, and with Dean Keenan and all that and... Andy oh, Rogers, you know, 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 and uh, Scott McLaughlin and Ryan McCann, all the guys, full scale fighting after games and that, like that. when we're getting beaten, I'm just like, this is <laughs> unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. I didn't know that sort of what went down really, you know what I mean? It was nah, like a big sort of investigation of what went on in the game, you know what I mean? I think we could beat off Steny. Full scale fighting, I was like, oh my God, but... Um, that's when you realise you need to step up and this is important to people. Aye. I mean, it's, it's different for youth and it's... Um, As it's, I said that a wee bit, you're basically people's livelihoods on aye. the line, isn't it? With relegation, aye. if you go part-time and all that. Aye. That's how, people's at the lower them. levels of football, that they don't realise that that, that, is, that is basically how how like, serious it's it can be with enough. people, you know what I mean? It's, yep. it's funny you mentioned Ryan McCann there. I was at Clyde when he was there and Ryan was the nicest guy ever. Aye. Like, he's Ryan still in it, he's in it, Thistle now, then the, the youths. Nicest guy ever, but on the uh, on the party could be a wee bit. Sanders, it's players are like that, yeah. it? It's all that. How many players are the nicest guys, man? Uh, and then you see them oh, going that switch, football switch. partner. I, deep, I, uh, I remember demon. Ryan McCann's first day. Man, so flings it about. I mean, uh, Ryan McCann's first day in at Clyde. So I was in the young dressing room, doing the kind of way dressing room down the far end. And uh, remember Mikey McGowan? Right. So. Ryan sitting and I, I don't know if it was just at Clyde or if it probably happened everywhere, but Ryan sitting reading his newspaper and what everybody used to do when you're reading the paper, walk by and I slap out your horn. I remember Mikey did it to Ryan and I never saw it happen, but we heard the story after it. The two of them were nearly square going with each other because mm -hmm. he just first day walked in, just slapped the, the newspaper he's on. I mean, I mean, Chico and Ricky sent me for a long stand, mate. I was in training full enough. time, mate, and I swear, mate, <laughs> to, I, I was so keen, mate. So crazy. <laughs> <used to, laughs> used to send the young boys across. Mate, the across, but it was I it was for the main story, right, 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 right up to the furthest away door <laughs> in the Jackie husband stand, man. And there was me, like I made an impression. I ran up, like, I go and get the sky hooks, not. And I was away, <laughs> like long first off. He says, Mister Dick, the chairman. It was Alan Dick at the time. Says. Yeah, the Mr. Chairman's looking for you for the sky hooks, and I'm away up and I chap the chairman's door going, Mr. Dick, is there sky hooks in here? No, <laughs> we man just fucking off down the stair there to her, isn't it, with you? When we, were, it, yeah. when we were on the Premiership, we obviously had a lot of boys coming on trial for abroad and all that, uh -huh. right in the summer. You get them pre-season, and they used to send them Gaffer wants to see him. Just a classic one. The boys <laughs> are going down. No, it's horrendous, <laughs> but the two of them just didn't care. Yeah, yeah amazing. I love that. Amazing. Love you mentioned being on loan at air, obviously, and the stuff at Steny. That was a, he played, what, 25 games that season, scored five goals mm -hmm. at a young age. That's, that's some return. Aye. He's got promotion through the playoffs. How did that season go for you? Because obviously he played quite a lot of football at Aye. such a young age. I loved it. I loved it. I got a phone call being McCall, my manager, the new, um, on a Wednesday morning, saying they're going to air. You didn't have a say back then. You was right, Aye. okay, any bother. Um, and it was, I looked at it and there was the only league below. They were challenging at the top end of the table. So I thought, it's no, it's not really much a step down. Only 17 at the time, brilliant. Go and, go and play games. And um, no, I loved it. I loved it straight away. The camaraderie in the dressing room, the boys were brilliant. Um, still, you know, if I see them, I speak to them, they bother. They're great guys. Helped me a lot. Um, it was just a brilliant season. We had a game, two games against Hibs in the Scottish. Mm -hmm. One of them on the telly, Mark Roberts scored to be beating them 1 0. Yep. Hibs on Sky Sports, so it was brilliant. I had my first taste of playing on the telly and against sort of Premiership opposition, mm -hmm. so it was 
an unbelievable season and um, ended up getting promoted. It was superb. Did you play? It was breaking. He's beating breaking. The... I played the ball for him. I played the ball for him. Um, I think we was it. We beat the first game and then he's won, won three the second. Overall. Aye, aye. Moff, Moff scored two late on. Um, Another ex junior boy. Aye, I see the... Moff's getting a thing. Is he not getting? He's a getting a testimonial. Test test what a brilliant player Moff is. Aye, he's been a great player. servant there. Um, I and I remember, it. sorry, sorry, that. Mm. And I remember um, after that game, the breaking game. Uh, sitting in the bus with the boys and coming down for breaking, all the boys having a drink, brilliant. And they said to me, it always sticks with me, you've got to enjoy winning when you win because it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. There's boys, I swear, boys that have played their full career and not won a single thing mm -hmm. in senior football. Mm -hmm. um, and they said, listen, young and new, you'll probably think, that was my right. first year playing really proper. you probably think this happens all the time, it doesn't, you've got to really sink in and, and make sure you enjoy it. So, I think you've, you've had to, obviously a very good career particularly with almost been a one-man club, over 300 appearances. You've got that playoff win at air. You've got a couple of league titles with Thistle. But that is only three in 10 years, 12 years or whatever. Aye. You know what I mean? And I it is, it's a lot. I had, obviously, at a lesser level. My first year at juniors, went to Rob Roy, 18-year-old, we won the league. I never won another league title. I got promoted a couple of times. Aye. Never won a league title after that. I never it's won crazy. anything in my... Right. I, it was all in my boys' club and... 21s and that, but when it came to actual junior football and that and stuff, I've never ever. It's a, it's a good way to look at it, and Aye. I suppose that's a mere experience. That, I, in it, that you? was the boys, Ryan McCann, I think it was, they said, uh, Scott McLaughlin. Got to enjoy these. So were you moments. still 17? No, just, so I was 17 when I went and then I turned 18. So did you get on it in the bus with the troops? Aye, but I'm, <laughs> I don't, I'm well. no, uh, <laughs> cut my small no faces. No, no, it, was the, it was the beers <laughs> pretending they were nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still happy to have beer by the way, mate. Shocking. You go back to Thistle, you don't play a huge amount, of, I think 17 games you've played that season. Like I said, Taylor, well, you're kind of looking and saying, oh, well, I wanted to go and play. Still only 18, still a boy. How was it? Ian McCall was your manager at that time. How was he with you when you went back in? So when we went back, it was Ian McCall, but then he left and it was Jackie McNamara oh, yeah. for that year. And um, because I've had a taste of it, you just want to keep playing and playing. And the fact that Air came up to our league now as well, I'm thinking, by the way, if I can play with Air, yeah. you know what I mean? But maybe I shouldn't have been, as you said, I was only 18, but really I've played about 30 games in my life, but sort of right if I go to, to say to people, but I wasn't saying out loud, I was just thinking in my head, I want to play. Um, a lot of the games, 17, I'd imagine a good 10, 12 of them off the bench. Mm. Um, again, sort of playing left, left mid of a four, not really playing my proper position. Um, so it was a tough year, tough year. And I think Air wanted to keep me as well. So I was looking at that going, I could be playing mm -hmm. all these games for Air. Yeah, I fear the and I'm no, I, and I'm no getting a game here. And it just didn't look like I was ever going to break through properly. So it was um, a, bit of a, a bit of a worry. And I remember one of the games in that season, probably about six games to go, playing Falkirk away. I wasn't even on the bench, stand. You know what I mean? Not even stripped. Is that under Jackie McNamara? Aye, not even stripped. And I'm thinking, this isn't great. Is the writing on the wall? I'm thinking, I'm thinking oh, this isn't great. And then I talked again about luck at the right moments. The boy Aaron Taylor Sinclair, don't know if you remember him, he was a left aye, back for aye. Thistle. Mm -hmm. Brilliant player. Went to Wigan for there, did he know or something? Brilliant player. Move. He done his hammy, six weeks to go. And I played left back for the last six games. Every game started, played the full game. And I think that's what gave the manager the trust to play the next season. That was the next season we ended up winning the league and all that. Aye. Just wee bits of luck. If he didn't get injured, I never played any games. He doesn't yeah. really know that I can, can handle myself. I mean, you've got to take advantage that's of the moments. I mean, that's what I was about to say. Football's, football's a really, some, we all love it, do you know what I mean? And passionate about it. But it is, it's like, you almost have to capitalise on somebody else's misfortune Listen, sometimes huh? to take a hang way. And I know it, it's all about the team and everything's all about the team and being together and all that. But football's honestly ruthless. I know if you get your opportunity, you need to basically be like, He's not getting his place back, and I'm going to keep my position in the team. I mean, when you're not playing, it's not as if people are really. Ah, you need sympathy. You, you know what I mean? So it's, you've got to. See, see, for me, was what was it like? You, you say that you're. I'd imagine now you're a Partick Thistle fan, yep. but um, growing up, as a Celtic fan. What was it like when Jackie McNamara comes in as your gaffer? Because obviously you'd you, oh, you'd I, you'd, I have, you'd have been growing up, Aye. and he was 
He was well liked. He'd, he'd have been at Celtic like when you were there, was he? Was he? He'd have been a player. Aye, aye. Probably a so player, he was. But, um, he was like a captain of the club that you supported. Oh. So what was it like? Ray? Well, we, he was a player first under That's Ian McCall. I'm forgetting mm -hmm. he was. He was a player first. Finished his career there. So we're still kind of played with him whenever I played with reserves and that. He was doing taking the reserves or whatever. Um, you want to impress these people that have played at such a good level. You, know, you want them to think he's he's actually all right. He's he's decent. He can play a bit. Mm -hmm. but you're, you're wanting to impress these guys. Simon Donnelly as well. What a player he was. That was his assistant man. It said was he was still assistant. the best player as a coach. Aye. No joke. He used to get involved in training. The best player by a mile. Was Big Twodge playing at the time? He just left when Are I. They? I was a young boy and he was still playing. Who was um, the Twodge God like? Wasn't he? He's just, <laughs> uh, oh, he's not right. Wasn't he? No, mental. Man, he was one of the ones I was probably scared of. <laughs> and I was younger. Big, big fairy, I know, Mark Twaddle. Is he, aye? Oh, see, at school? He was a tumble boy, you know. Oh, was he? Aye, he was about the same yeah. year as me at school. Yeah. He calls himself the Twad God. Twad <laughs> God, I know. Aye. Unbelievable. Big life back, wasn't he? Aye. aye. Wasn't he facially back up too much, too? Oh, mate. You're saying there, McNamara's had a bit of trust in you. You think that's what gave him a bit of trust mm -hmm. in you? You've had to see the end of the season. It, the next season, arguably the best season of your career at such a young age. Mm. What what kicked you on so much? Because you ended up playing over forty games that season. We'll touch on it in a minute. You end up getting your your call ups for the twenty ones and stuff like that, which is just incredible. What was different to that see that season, which was only a matter of months after you've just kind of broke in? What was different that year? I remember the last game of the season before we played Dakies and I'd scored. So like the first, goal? Uh, first goal we uh, drew two each. And we got in after the, the game, you know what it's like. It was a nothing game. They they were only playing for it, and both teams were sort of mid table. And um I remember Jackie saying to us, Come back, we're gonna win the league. That's what he said to us. Yeah. He proper believed it. We're gonna come back and win the league this year. We came back, we signed brilliant guys like Steve Oss, um Welsh, Sean Welsh, big Conrad Balatoni, guys like that. Young hungry boys that came for Welsh was at, at Hibs as a young boy. Nah. Conrad at Hearts, Lawless at Motherwell, guys that nah. had a point to prove nah. and were good enough to do it. Yeah. Um, and the most important thing, we started well, we started well, won the first six games of the league. Um, but for me personally, people probably don't even realise or, or remember, I played left back for the first, the first six games mm -hmm. that we won, all six of them. And the boy Sinclair, Taylor Sinclair that I spoke about the year before, he got the team of the year, the year before, right? So I'm thinking when I come back, Still going for centre mid, but if there's a chance I could maybe sneak in at left back, but I'm thinking there's no way. He's team of the year and that. He's a star boy. He deserves to be there. First game of the season, Falkirk in the league. Sinclair bench me left back. And I was like, even I was a bit like, and you know as well, you can sense it. Were you flying in pre-season? Done well in pre-season. Uh, yeah, I, I done well. No, no that I, I deserve to play in front of him, but I was, I was doing well. Mm -hmm. Were you playing left back in pre season? Or I, were you mixed? I left back. So, so, you know what it's like. You uh, play half and our team come on, you play a half and all that. But I never ever thought I'd play in that first game. You know, it's the first game of the season. Uh, you play your strongest team, and that's what it is. And he was in the bench, and probably other boys are thinking as well, what's, what's going on here? But we won the first six games, and then just so happened, I think Hugh Murray ended up getting a red card. Sinclair back to left back, me into midfield, and then he stayed in. That was it. Yeah. See, you're, you're talking there. You know what it's like you're through pre-season, every player you're always thinking, you've been about long enough even at youth level to know who a manager fancies and stuff. Mm. See when he's he's playing you at left back and you're thinking Sinclair's going to get straight back in when the season starts. In your head are you going, why is he doing this? Why is he playing me left back? I, I, I want to play in the middle of the part, I'm aye. not going to play at left back. 100% aye, aye. But then again, you're, you're young so you've not really got the voice to, to say what you really probably want to say. You're just doing what the manager tells you at a young age. and um, I was honestly so surprised when I read the team out and I'm number three and I'm like, oh, he'll be raging because he's established at that level. He's, you know, he's like a big tall boy, mm -hmm. physical, could handle mm -hmm. it, no bother. Um, but, you know, we had a good team and, and lucky for me, we ended up winning the first six games yeah. and then you're on the you're on the road anyway. McNamara leaves during that season. Aye. Obviously, Alan Archibald comes in and it's somebody he's all known. A, he was captain of the aye, captain. he played aye, he played so aye. he's somebody he's all known he's a lot of respect for is that a wee bit of kicking the balls for you when McNamara goes Dundee United he's seen it as a step up mm. how did you react to that knowing that he was away we were gutted because all the boys loved him he was brilliant we were playing some amazing football um, you know, beating teams 5-0 7-0 and all that 
it was great stuff, but um, he thought it was the right thing for him, and it, you know, Dundee United are a massive club as well, so we had, the boys understand, really, you know, you're disappointed, but you, you understand that it was a step up, they were in the Premiership, probably flying high, um, chance to get the cup finals and all that, so you don't uh, begrudge people that, and um, you know, Archie came in, and he didn't change much, just kept it sort of the way it was, and um, you know, made us a lot harder to beat as well, because Jackie, you know, he's such a, a great coach. Away from home at times, we'd be a wee bit sort of easy to play against. And, um, and we lost a few games away from home in that first half of the season. Then Archie came in, we never lost again to the end of the season. You know, mm. made us tougher and a bit, a bit harder to beat. Um, he's our demon, isn't he, Archie? Oh, man. solid. Solid, solid. Man. Cheer, man, used that to, gym, mate, doing chin oh. and all that, mate. He's an absolute machine, Aye. mate. Used to wear the big studs. No, nightmare. Nah, <laughs> nightmare. Mate, right I'm down the back solid. of strikers. So, um, no, he wasn't the one to mess with Archie. No. It was, how did it feel winning the league? That's, I mean, that's a huge achievement. Again, you're still very young. You possibly think, because you had a promotion the year before, when the league out, you think that might be just what happens. Aye. Did you take it in, or did you just think, we'll just go for the next thing? <laughs> I think I did take it in as, as much as I could anyway. Um, but that was a, a totally different level for what happened there. You know, the crowds we got that year, towards the end of the season, the big, massive games. We played Morton, basically a title decider. We won it, we were eight points clear, we... Forty go or something. Sell out at Fur Hill. Um, the game had to be postponed in our fifteen minutes to let the crowd in. It was a night game, just brilliant. You can see what the clubs, the potential of the club then. Aye. Um, but it was an amazing feeling. Just again, playing near enough every single one of the games, feeling like you're a big part of it. Um, that was a unbelievable feeling. I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. We are we are under twenty one call ups, being in the championship. It doesn't happen too often. Oh, time it doesn't happen too often mm. that a player gets called up to the twenty ones at that for that level. You played the three games: Greece, Luxembourg, and England. What was that like? <laughs> Amazing, because I thought I'd never played for Scotland at any level whatsoever. Yeah. Aye. So again, I'm not thinking about Scotland either when I'm you know playing with this. So I'm just getting my head down, trying to just stay in the team. That was my my job. Make sure I'm still playing every week. And I remember Jackie saying, probably going to get a phone call with Billy Stark. He pulled you in, say aye, it, or just aye, and I was like, <sighs> and I remember it was at one of the games we were at. This was when about probably September, October, Billy Stark. Because me and Stephen O'Donnell were obviously in the same team. I think he was mm. watching us both. And I scored a belter against Livy. Beat him 2-0, I think it was. And he was at the game. So that might have swung him, swung him my way, you know what I mean? Um, and I got the phone call and went to Greece. Away and a friendly, and um, I started the game. It was it was amazing, but I didn't think I'd ever get that level, and it sort of represent your country. It's, 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 it's superb. That's superb. Um, I had a sort of horror against England. But it was a who was playing for England? Oh, have you seen well, the team? Uh, you know, the team? It's I actually checked. The, I didn't look at the team today. I checked the today because they're twenty ones and always no, tiny. If you look at the team, that's I the swear. biggest defeat Scotland twenty ones have ever had. I am. Oh, I. <laughs> Who was that? Kane, six 0 Six 0 Kane, Kane, Sterling, Redmond. Shelby, Barkley, Stones. You're joking. I swear. No hair down in them. I swear. I swear. <laughs> Scary. They were just... See, to be fair, I remember the game well. It was at uh, Bramall Lane down at Sheffield. I'm starting. I was buzzing. I was like, what a chance this is. Go and play against them. Amazing. The first half wasn't too bad. I remember thinking, cause I'm actually know that much at my depth here. Getting on the ball. Listen, they were dominating the game. and I think the first goal was actually just a long ball. Right over the top, the boy scored. I think it was maybe Connor Wickham. And, um, he was a big he, he was a unit, prospect. Man. He was a unit. When he Huge. broke in, they were I, talking about how he was going to be a big, big massive talent. Um, so go to half time. I think, listen, it's not too bad. I know as if I've been had a nightmare or anything. Second half, they upped it. Aye. Oh my God. Getting, you know, that way you think you've got time, they're nicking the ball That's off you. Really yeah. names, by the but way. Honestly, uh, 6 0, and it was a, a doing, but an experience. What an experience. An experience. Uh, it's, to say you played against Sterling Kane. Do you get a yeah. tap, no? No. I wouldn't have too young, I know. I was young at no that age, innit? I suppose you're not going to go. Even then, I wouldn't, have the, I wouldn't have the, the brass neck task for a top when I've just no? been beat 6 0. Couldn't he? Couldn't he? <laughs> nah, couldn't he? Nah, well, see me being in the coaching side now. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, when we did not get the picture with Andy Gorham before the game, and I was like, him, you hear me, Dick? Gas <laughs> Andy for a picture after the game, <laughs> no, before the game, before <laughs> we're about to play him. Know what I mean? I know. But that's, 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 that's quite incredible because I suppose as well, I'm, I've mentioned there, 
you're coming up for granted probably more experience than a lot of boys in the team because you've you've won a league title even if it's at a lower level you're a big club in Thistle where thousands of people are coming to watch you you're playing against boys who are playing in the Premier League Aye. at that stage, you know what I mean? Like mm. top, top teams who are world class players now. It's, it's, they're it's just, they're, 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 sorry, that they're just, they're just faster. And they're all, they all seem bigger. Aye, strong. Aye, it's just, it's. I is remember, he Fissel and all, but see, if Fissel own that, see when, see when Fissel are doing well, man, and oh, the aye. team's doing well, it's booming it's down amazing. it. It's booming down amazing. it for Hull. Aye. aye, you have four or five thousand in games and stuff. Aye, it's a good Easy. fall on the club's I actually, just to, Keep on England. I remember, remember Hearts played Tottenham, must be 10, 15 years ago now, and Harry Redknapp was manager. And I remember listening to him get interviewed after it, and he says, I was surprised uh, how much smaller the Hearts players were. Mm-hmm. So now, and you're like, I don't know what it is. I don't know how can it be that they're just doing there. I, I mean, they're just doing the road. I, I don't think know. part of the thing, you maybe you look at population where, where they're getting to choose for 55 million Aye. people or whatever it is, they're getting to choose from. A massive pool, and, you get and six, it's also you get a lot of diff- different ethnic backgrounds as well. Probably where it's like it's not just mainly in Scottish teams. It's always for the scheme, yeah. white guys and all that. Whereas they've got a better diverse group of players to mm. pick for, and we've got a much smaller pool. I think I might have something to do with it as well yeah. that it's just they have such a large number. Yeah. Where guys who would have played in the Scotland Twenty Ones team would have been playing for Championship teams, League One teams. Whereas they've got Aye. top top players going Aye. into their team. You still had a few no bad players in your team: Ryan Jack and Armstrong, uh, Fivey, guys like that. So we had no bad players, but we were out. We were out our, our depth big time. That's fair enough. Aye. If one of the championship moving into the Premier League, he's end up. I didn't actually realise until I was looking. I didn't realise he had five years in the Premier League. I knew he said a few years, Aye. but five years. How was the step up? Was it something that you felt quite comfortable with, and the team felt quite comfortable with? Because you did. First season a bit tougher, but he's did pretty well in the, the Premier League. I think, speaking about half the team, I think we, we all found that it wasn't that big a jump. But honestly, we were playing really good stuff as soon as we got up. Um, we kept near enough the same team for the league below, bar a couple of players. Um, and the boys were just enjoying it. it was going to these stadiums and you know, playing at the top level, you, you can't beat it. Um, and that first season, in the first half of the season especially, some of the games we gave away were battered Hibs, I remember one game at Fur Hill, and I mean proper battered them, beat us 1-0, just missing chance after chance, and ended up going down to the last couple of games to, to stay up, um, but the main objective of that season was just to stay up and um, sort of consolidate the, the club. Was it no one one of the other seasons you go top six? That was 2006. But later on, aye. That was 2016-17 season. Bit later on. You never played that year, did never you? Never played, no. That was the year of the Invincible Select team. Aye. I didn't realise until I'd looked again that you hadn't played, basically, but you played 12 games in a two-year period. Oh, aye, nightmare. Nightmare period. Was it Tynecastle, you got a bad injury? Aye, so it was around about March 2016, um, just chasing a goalkeeper down at Tynecastle, and he just chopped it back and just pinged a wee diag out and my legs just gave way, but I didn't think it was that bad at the time. You know what we usually, when you do, you do something proper bad, you can't walk or... Mm-hmm. Your stretch or doff or it's big swelling. My knee didn't really swell up or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you just buckle? Aye, but I was in pain for like a good couple of minutes, like yeah, proper yeah. pain. Just You're the worst day. ones when there's knee. I know. Uh, and all is a wee bit and knee. What was it that happened? Was it an ACL? Uh, aye, push push it. But he thought I'd done a sort of partial tear that you can get away with doing rehab on mm-hmm. it. So I'd done that for months. Didn't work. Ended up having to get the surgery anyway. Good two and a bit year out. So absolute nightmare. You're you're a good you've got a good mentality, Vans. I was talking about that earlier, but how did you find that period, man? It's hard no Terrible. playing and all that. How were you about the place and how were <sighs> you You try and even though people tell you you're part of it, you're no. And that's a harsh reality, you're no. The boys are enjoying winning, whatever, on a Saturday, and you're just no part of it because you're not involved. It's it's horrible. Horrible. Um you go to games and Everybody's asking you, when, when you back? And all that sort of stuff. And you're just like, nightmare. You just can't see the finish line as well. You're just wanting to get back. So it's no, it's no easy. It's definitely no easy. Uh, Especially been out that long. Um, but, you know, touch wood, it's been, been all right. What's the rehabilitation like for, you see, you know, like, say Celtic and Rangers or your Premier League teams where players would be in the hydro pools and stuff and they're getting all that. 
Thistle don't have that type mm. of stuff. What was your rehabilitation like through that period? Ah, uh, you're going to the, you're basically just going to the gym and the players are, are going to the training. Um, and as you said, this, the facilities are not what they've got. Um, the gym at Fur Hill still right. <laughs> pretty old. It's brutal, yeah, don't right. you remember it? Um, and even if you're going to a, a gym, you're, it's not as if you're getting one-on-one -on -one treatment. Um, you're going, sometimes you need to go and do the stuff yourself because the physio needs to be at training. You're maybe not doing it as well as you maybe should do because you've got nobody watching you, stuff like that. Um, so it's it's difficult. It's difficult, but you just need to get the head down and, and try and get back. How did you do with that period mentally? Tough. Aye, uh, tough. I remember one, I get, uh, I was there for about two years and I came back in pre season. I should have been 2018 19 season, pre season. And I came back training every day and I'm thinking, right, this is it. Here we go. Day every single session in pre-season. Get to the Tuesday before the first League Cup game. It's doing a double at the science parts. And I swear it was the last two minutes of training. Probably about half three on a Tuesday. The ball comes down the line. And I go run to catch it and just try and cross the ball in. And my knee like jars. Right? And I'm thinking, no, no. Because even then I was probably in a month to month deal at the time. Because I was out for two years, they weren't going to give me a yeah, deal. Is you that what I mean? Is oh, that your deal was? A aye, month, month, month? Aye. Um, I don't know if it was, was it three months maybe? It was, it was definitely short term. Um, so I was fighting, trying to get back. But I'm thinking, I've, I've done the fall pre season, got through it all, no bother, knees feeling good. Then that happens. I remember sitting in the car park after the, the game, eh, sorry, after training at, at the science parts. I just sat in the motor for about an hour. Name, right. name, music, nothing. Just sat there thinking, right. if this is bad, again, I I'm done, done probably. Day. I'm genuinely done because that would have been a good three, three year out, and then you're, you're toiling. So I remember sitting in the motor. It was, it was brutal. But luckily, that was only a wee, a wee twist. I was only out for, for four weeks, um, right. and I was back for that for that season anyway. But um, how but, did uh, it feel? I know the club of the club have obviously then been loyal to you mm -hmm. because how much service that you've gave to them. But how? How is that? How is that for you when you're? How hard must it be to concentrate on just football when you know that there's no that security behind? I you know it's not easy. It's not easy. Um, you, know, you need that support around about you. The people, um, you know, backing you up. You got your mum, dad, and girlfriend, and all that. They were they were amazing. But um, it's not easy, especially when you're. I'm just looking back a few years before that. You know, touted for for a move. Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're looking back going, how's this came to this, really? You yeah. know what I mean? But you don't want to be that guy that's, oh, why is it me? Or, you know what I mean? Feel too sorry for yourself. But yeah. at times you do. At times you do. It's only natural if you feel that way. And um, no, I was gutted, but it, was, it happened and that's it. How close were you going to Aberdeen? Derry, aye. Aye. Derry. I met Derry McInnes at hotel in, you in going Glasgow. To was sorry. No, no, sorry. no. Go on, fire away. Just because um, you touched. Just because oh, you touched. No, I met uh, Derry McInnes at hotel um so i could speak to the clubs of january onwards <coughs> um i went down to barnsley went to their training ground spoke to lee johnson Aye. i went down there and they wanted me um but i was going to wait to the summer and just have all the thingies there and wait and see what what i would do and then i get my injury in the march so terrible timing terrible <sighs> i've mentioned a couple of times perspective there's nothing to guarantee it would have worked if you'd went there. And, and you touched on it earlier about things just happened to you. Aye, aye. You're, Hall of, you're going into the Hall of Fame. Yep. New, when this web episode comes out, there'll been a weekend there. You're going into the Hall of Fame, Partick Thistle. You've had a very good career there. So maybe that just was what was meant to happen. Aye, you, maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe. It's, but you've, you're only human to aye. Oh, of course, of course. What if? Aye. You know what I mean? Aberdeen were getting the finals all the time. Brilliant players, Kenny McLean, Ryan Jack and all that. And you always wonder. Mm -hmm. What if I get a chance to play with him? Would I have uh, went even better? Or, you, but you don't know. You never uh, know. Even Barnsley, they were probably in the championship they at were, the time. They were, they were League, League One, one at the time. Right. Um, but they went up to the championship uh, a year later. So you're still even um, set. Some of the teams in League One are not that you've seen in League Financially, One. Financially, that could have been important. Of course it is. Well. Aye, aye. But it never happened. Um, but aye. See, that's, you've asked the question there about how it felt. I've been, I retired it. 
28 again, it's a much lower it's level. You're still trying to kick <laughs> that ball around again. I just get myself into testimonial games. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, I can't uh, the amount of games you get called out as a legend, man. It's freaking me out because I, 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 I don't see my name on these team sheets. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I basically stopped playing properly 27, 28 because my, my right knee is an absolute disgrace. And I, I know how you feel in a sense again at a low level where when you've had that wee tweak and you're like, I don't know if I can do this again. I don't know if I can keep putting myself through this and doing months and months of rehabilitation. And then it's something we speak about quite a lot where it is so difficult when you've been through the kind of injuries to, to pull yourself through. And the club were good to you in the sense that they kept you there when they, didn't, mm. they probably didn't have to and you're on the month to month. That puts a lot of pressure on you mentally though, does it know that you're like, if this goes go again, then that like Aye. you kind of touch on that step up. It's done. I know. I am. Um, I might end up playing lower level League Two stuff, or I might go junior or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's quite hard. You talk about that time you're sitting in the motor, no music, and you're just sitting there listening. People don't understand how difficult Aye. that is mentally. Close to tears, it's, uh, yeah. it's it's easy, easy. It tears me out. Listen, no, I don't I, think anybody would ever think it unless you you were actually no. greeting no, an no, all. No, I, I remember you know my mum came in. That day, probably that night, and I couldn't stay my knee out. And I was like, oh, please don't be recruited again or, or anything big. And I did, I was just bursting out of tears. I was like, this is just brutal. Brutal, yeah. please don't be it. But lucky, lucky for me it wasn't it. But, you know, they wee things that, you know, if, if it was bad again, who knows where I'd be. Probably no playing, definitely no playing at Thistle. Mm -hmm. Who knows if I'd have played again or whatever. But yeah. you're, you're kind of in a privileged position where people who have never played at that level, think oh why are you complaining you've you get to play football that's basically Aye. most boys dreams growing up but they don't understand what it feels like knowing that you might not be able to do that anymore because it gets taken away from you nah, yeah, it's fans, so simple no, fans and all but and there is fans were are well within their rights at times to you players that's thinking but see the be all in it see the hit the main thing is players care well, of course, so players do. care, yeah. man. They want to be playing. They want to see the team doing well. They so. want to be part of a successful team. So he's injured all the time, blah blah ah, blah. And it's like, but you think like, he wants to be injured? No, no playing. Oh, man, because it's a lonely, mate. It's lonely. It doesn't matter even if it's at the lower levels, man. That's I'm so seeing, true, I'm man. seeing boys at out our team now, and they're injured. And I, I look at them and I'm like, I, want to, I always want to go and talk to them because mm. I'm like, they're so they're so important to it, man, because they're just it's you need to keep an eye on players, uh, you know what I mean? That's what it's difficult. Irritates me and all people say to me, or not probably about me, injury prone. But I don't want injury. Uh, Aye. You know what I mean? It's not as if I'm injury prone. Uh, you know what I mean? I was like, it just irritates me. I'm like, ah, no, Emma. I was out with my knee for two years, the same thing. Like, it just irritates me when people say that. Uh, it's, it's the old girl, your chocolate. Aye. I had no, I've absolutely destroyed my knee. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> like, I, I know. I know. No chocolate, it's not, like, it's not like I'm pulling up with hammies and calves every other I know, week. exactly, yeah. I know. So you get, you get relegated on goal difference. Um, Hamilton finish above you, you end up going down on goal difference. I think it was like nine goals of difference. Basically, looking at the league table, you didn't score enough goals that season. Then you go into the championship. How was it after your five year? Granted, did you miss a couple, but as a club, how was it going back down into the, the championship after a, a very good stint in the Premier League? It was strange for me because I never played that year. We went down. I played mm. a couple of games at the start of the season. Um, I think I played three or four games, started right at the start of the season. I think Celtic, Hibs, uh, Aberdeen. And then I, I was out with my knee again, the, the same thing. Um, injury prone, that boy, so. I know, he's injury prone, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so I, I, I never played all the way to the end of the season. So I'm sitting there watching, I'm thinking, just please don't go down, don't go down. As you said, end up going down in goal difference uh, and at the playoffs, and then Livy beat us. Um, and then you take that drop down. So for me, you know, I was gutted, but at the same time, I was just trying to focus on getting back myself. And, um, you know, maybe the step down gave me that wee bit extra chance to play. If we were still in the Premiership, they might have signed a few other boys and I might <coughs> not have, have played as as much when I came back. So, um, no, we, we were all disappointed. And, you know, as you touched on there, nobody, you don't try to go down. No, you, there's players, players try. It just wasn't to be for us. Um, a lot of games that season, I think two, two against Dundee, they scored 89-90. He beat us 
Q draw one of the games. You're not, you know what I mean? It's small margins. Yeah, it's it's small margins. And, um, <clears throat> Hamilton seemed here for a long time. Had their <coughs> luck just staying up, didn't they, right. man? They were, they were caught clinging up, on. But at the same time, they, but they, you know, were, they, get, they were decent, <laughs> a decent team. Hard aye. to play against. Aye. Hard to play against. You've had your season in the championship, mid table around the COVID season comes in. No, I think yourself, Stranraer, and Hearts were the three that were, were most impacted by that. Hearts, for me, looking at it, they were four points adrift, eight games to go, played the same amount of games. Yous were two back with a game in hand. Yous went down on the average points per game. I've, it's escaped my mind to stayed up instead. Is it was uh, it have been Queen of South? Queen of South. So they had one point per game and used were point nine six per game. But if you had won that game in hand, and the reason we didn't have a game in hand was because that game was put back because Inverness won the cup. So you know what I mean. So it wasn't your fault that we weren't playing it. Aye, aye. We just thought it was just mm. a total disgrace. It was you can talk whatever way you want about it, but how you can put a team down with a game in hand. You know what I mean? If everybody's played the same games, you go, you know what? Might not be ideal, but it is what it is. Mm. But a game in hand. Yeah. I... You know what I mean? It's just terrible. Shocking. The boys were devastated with that. Because again, it brings people's wages down and <coughs> everything. You know what I mean? It's, aye, it's aye, a big it's thingy big. on the Exactly. On the I was just about to say that when you touched on it with Asa from Adam. That's not even just you. Because right? the likelihood is if you get released, you can still go and play football for somebody else. But you're looking at admin staff and yeah, people yeah, that actually... Yeah. I mean, they I rely know. on exactly. you, using yeah. their job, the club, the people and it's that can lose their jobs. You've had a season in League One, so actually, I'm, I want to go back a wee touch. One that interested me was um, when Gary Caldwell was the manager. He was part of the the season where he went down. Mm. What was he like as a manager? Because I remember looking at it. I'm a Celtic fan. Gary Caldwell was never a superstar at Celtic, but he was a very solid pro, mm. fifty odd caps for Scotland. Took the job and I remember like I've always had a soft spot for Thistle because I'm originally from Mary Hill. It was the first time I ever went to see my dad like Thistle used to go and watch them a lot. So I was always keeping an eye on it. And I thought when Gary Caldwell came in, I thought, well, oh, a bit a bigger name might get better players. And what was he like as a manager? It just didn't it just didn't work for him. It didn't work. Um no saying he's a bad guy or anything like that. It just didn't work. A lot of the boys that were there doing you know, a Thistle legend, Erskine, Thistle legend, he fell out with him. And it just, you know, managers either, you know, go all the way or, or they don't. And I think he fell out with him. It didn't quite work for him. He was a good coach, really, he was a good coach. Um, he saw what he was trying to do. Um, but I don't know at our level if that, that could really work. Um, and he, you know, he's probably fell out with too many people. Yeah, and I, it, it just didn't. Hard. And as soon as you lose... Because they boys are loved by the fans, you know what I mean? And They're the loved. players and all. Exactly. And as soon as you start to lose that, um, on top of the results not going well, um, you know, you're, you're on a slippery slope. Patience so. goes dead quick, man. Of course it does. It's, it's, it's quick. funny, like, Chris is uh, asking, I don't See, know. See, he just got a deal bit with Exeter, are these? Nice, Like, Chris is asking, I don't really know him. I know who he is and played a couple of games, teams against him a long time ago. But you're saying he's a really nice guy. Chris Dolan is... The nicest guy ever. You're like, no. how do you fight with him? I know. Uh, so it's great. And it's all the, it's, you know, they two were, were probably the, the symbols of this at the time, two unbelievable players. Both of them probably a year after each other. And you're just thinking, probably know the right way to go. I just think, Matt, new managers, and I'm not saying that Gary Caldwell done this, but I just think sometimes new managers go in and think to themselves, Right, I'm going to just totally mm. flip this. I'm going to change it mm. up. I need to get rid of a few of the big characters and all that. Whereas sometimes you need to go in and you need to get all the big characters and the popular players on mm. side. But sometimes I think managers go in with this. I'm going to totally Aye. change it. And I do respect that. I've seen he's a lot of an unbelievable career and a, a, a brilliant player. Um, and still, obviously, being his manager now at Exeter, and I wish him all the best because he's still. He done a few good things for me as well. Um, he gave me a new a new deal just when I was coming back playing, and uh, gave me that wee bit of stability. Um, so I don't, you know, I've, I've got any sort of bad things to say about me. I had a wee couple of fallouts during during the season, but these things yeah. things happen in football. You don't hold any any yeah. grudges. 
I don't think Banjo would say one bad thing about <laughs> one person, <laughs> not I me. Mean, I think. You, you'd know because you never say anything bad about him, do you? I know, mate. I like his <laughs> style, <laughs> mate. I like his style, mate. You'll, you'll go far in the game after your career's done, man. So, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, no, like this is good. He next to me. No, no, that's how no, nobody wants me. Um, this season in League One, it was only, I think it was only 27 games. Nice. He's played that season, obviously, again, because of COVID. He's had a really good season. He's have won the league. Did that feel extra special after the couple of years you've just had? Or... Was it just, it's just another league title we've won, we're going to get back in the championship? Uh, it was special. It was, for being, you know, taking into account, you know, playing for a few years and coming back and, and winning again, it was amazing. Just the only thing was, it was there was no fans there to really properly see it, but um, such a strange year that year, wasn't it? It was, it was weird. Aye, weird Aye. Just, wasn't it quite, just, it wasn't real football, it was, it was weird. Nah. Um, but we, you know, we came late, I think we were about eight points behind Falkirk. They absolutely collapsed, end up not even making the playoffs. Oh, mate, that was some was, collapse. Oh, oh my mind god, that, man. But we played them to win the league at Fur Hill. If they beat us, but there was still a couple of games to go, they could have still came back and won it. Yeah. 5 0, we beat them, and ah, I'm talking yeah. 5 0 going on about 10. They looked like they just completely. I spoke to Lee Muller about it because I'm sure he was. Was he not a gaffer for them? It was Gary, Gary Holt. I don't know if Lee Muller was, was there course. before ah, us. Yeah, he was there yeah, before yeah. us, wasn't he? I think Lee Nat took it after that or something. Lee I don't and, know. Uh, McCracken, wasn't it? Aye, aye, but he that, was... that's a club that you said two relegations basically back, was it back to back he's back to back relegations in a big club and then you look at Falkirk that's a big club as well who are kind of similar in stature and size to Thistle they've been in the Premier League had long spells there it's just not working for them now. It's like... they're selling out for that Dunfermline game which is what, over the weekend mm. before but I see it's so I mean Dunfermline as well Dunfermline were doing there even mm. probably 2014-15 odd they were doing League 1 for a few years no easy. You mm. need to get out of there ASAP. And we were uh, you know, pretty fortunate to go and go and win it because Falkirk gave it away. They did. We we obviously we had to go and win our games, but all they had to do was a couple of results here and there and they, and they were home and dry. But they just completely, completely folded and we picked up the pieces. Yeah, the year in the championship. Now this season he's a looking granted he's having a great couple of weeks losing the air, which was a sore one for you. He's had a really, really strong season so far. Obviously, the aim is to go up, but how how's the camp feeling with the new after a couple of bad results when you had been top of the league? We're just desperate to, to get back to to winning. Um, we've got a pretty good squad, probably the strongest squad we've had in a, a couple of years. Um, you no know, boys that can step in, um, probably two for each position. So it's um, it's going to be an interesting season. We started really well, had a bad couple of weeks. Um, we got to the quarter final of the cup against Aberdeen, gave it away in the first half there. We wanted to show a wee bit better than what we did. Um, gave them two easy goals. And at that level, they'll, they'll punish you. And then we've been beat a few in the bounce in, in our league. So we need to get back to back to being harder to beat because we're conceding too many goals at the minute. But the most important uh, no point for us is making sure we're, we're still on the hunt sort of around about Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, it's such an important period of, of the season. Uh, making sure you're you're still on the coattails of whoever's up there, or if it is to be us, then superb. Uh, yeah, I, I did that. I, I did think that, and all, man, you say that, Banzo. It's like, as a squad that I look at now for Fisso, and I'm like, that is mm -hmm. a strong squad that mm -hmm. they're assembling there. Do you know what I mean? I so, uh, there's, there's boys that can, can step in when, when other boys are out and they bother, and um, you, know, you think it wouldn't be too much of a, a downgrade. Nah. You've, 30 year old, just turned 30. You've still hopefully got a good four or five, six years ahead of you where you can play at a good level. It's still early days this season. We're not even at Christmas yet, but it's got to be in your mind. Where you think I can have another crack at the Premier League? I know. No, I would love to. I would honestly love to. I'm not feeling as fit as I've ever felt in, in my career. So, um, I'd love another go at it again. Especially sort of when I get injured, we were in there, came back, and we're kind of doing a level again. And I'm, I'm working my way back to to try and try and prove to everybody that I can I can still do it. And that's what you do. You want to play against these players at the, at the top level. Yeah. And, um, and see if he can still compete. Um, so I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it, and it'd be such a special thing. Um, I'm 30 year old and still out there, sort of hopefully playing every week and, and contributing to the team. Do you think you're a better player now, Andrew, than what you were back in the day? Honestly, back, back um, I, I honestly, I, I honestly do. I think I'm, aye. I definitely no, I'm not, I'm not worse than what I was anyway. Sort aye. of run about the same. Um, but you've got that experience of, of, of know how. Um, I think I'd I'd be able to handle the step up again 
me bother, but again, it's proven it. It's proven it and going showing you can actually do it. What about younger boys? How are you with the younger boys? Ah, uh, well, listen, the boys have we've got a few cracking, cracking young ones that are coming Aye. through. Um, fingers crossed they can make a breakthrough and um, you know, they pl play for the first team as, as long as sort of I have. But they're um, they're cracking young boys, and you need to try and help them because you were there once. Mm. You know what I mean? You were Aye. you were there, and you need to help these boys. There's no point in shouting and screaming at them. It doesn't work. Um, and I didn't like that when people done that to me when I was a young boy. You know, you, you weren't helped. Um, you try and help them as much as you can. That was just a question I was going to ask you. Yeah. What, what do you think about for? What do you think for future? But do you think it's a uh, help? Pick it? No, no, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just brilliant. I don't, know, I don't think you could read there. Okay, you've got to pay No, you got to remember me. I'm not just all darkness, <laughs> PG. You know what I mean? I do like to touch on some serious oh, points now and again. But what about the future for you, Banzo? What, what do you see? I know we can, I know we've not got a crystal ball. No, we can't I... see into it. But you want to finish your career at first, or do you think that? Just see what happens, or you want to get coaching, I, I, or you. I think you've got to see what happens. You, you honestly don't know. I've, my contract's up in the summer. Um, you know, nothing's been said yet, so we'll, we'll wait and see sort of what happens with that. Um, but yeah, I think you've got to just take it a, a year at a time. I'd love to play right in my thirties, but you never know. You mm -hmm. never know. But I feel as fit as I've ever felt, as I said, playing all the time. Um, so I'd love to keep playing. And the coaching side, I think I would like to. Um, get into sort of the youth side of things and, and try and help sort of the youth teams out. But again, I don't know if you, you really know until you go and try it. So, um, you know, I've sort of been focusing on my on my playing side, but it's getting to that, that stage now where I'd like to maybe try and take a step in and maybe help with the, with the younger teams and just on a voluntary level, go in and see maybe what they're, what they're up to and how I can help. Um, I'm pretty sure the club would... Um, would like me doing that considering I've came through the youth level and, and played. Ah, um, yeah. So I hope so, but you, you, you never really know what's doing the line, do you? No, you do not, mate, but you've still got hopefully many a year left playing, not I mean, and mm -hmm. hopefully the old pig and whistle can get back to the <laughs> Fingers crossed. top division again. Have, have you got any badges or have, is there any you've looked at? No, I've I have looked, I've been looking into it. Um it used to be you used to start on the on the B, but I think you need to start on the, the C now. So um you know you need to the women's team with Brian. Big Brian, I know. I I don't know. I keep a wee eye on it because Brian, before he was a football player, I had to show him the ropes up at Destiny up in the tune. <laughs> Did you? When he was a West Park Did boy. You? you were Rosville boys. <laughs> that way. West Park boys know how to do I think we had the team, the same uh, suit Jaco, and I think we nipped the same 15 birds that night. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said, I've nipped 16. That, and I said, I've nipped 16. Man, it was the same birds we just kept the tape. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was back in the old days in Destiny, mate. But... Mark Banzo, mate, it's been a brilliant chat, man, and it's uh, good to sit and talk. And I love great. that. A one club man, near enough, mate. I think you don't get well, enough I'd for say, that. I'd football. say, I, in a sense, because you were still a Thistle player when you were in loan. Aye. Ah, so you I didn't really even go back. It is pretty rare now, isn't it? You, you know, people move about it, all mate. the time. And, um, I love Thistle. It's a, it's a brilliant club. Got the great potential to, to get back to it um, in the Premiership. And, you know, I love it. It's only 10 minutes from the corner for me as well, and everything's all local. And, um, you know, I've met some some of the best people in my life through the club. Yeah. And as soon as I, I left school, I was in there, um, and luckily still there now. So and you've got to um, you've got to be thankful for these things. And listen, I'm playing football, and it's ah, what, what an mean, unbelievable. But at the end of the day, you got lots to look forward to at the club, and so it should be, mate, because you've gave just as much back to that club as what, what they've gave to you, you know what I mean? So yeah, they wouldn't have kept you there if you hadn't done well for them. Oh, I can't <laughs> know if I was rubbish, I'd have been bending, bending ah, straight out of the door. But, um, no, the club have, have stopped by me and um, you know, hopefully I've I've done enough to, to sort of help them out. Ian McGill, be the man <laughs> and I'll deal here, man. Well, you've got your, your Hall of Fame dinner and stuff on Saturday. How, how are you feeling for that? Is that... On the forefront of your mind, or is it just get the game out of the way and then go and enjoy it? Um, I'm a bit nervous about it all, truth be told. I don't really like the spotlight on me and stuff like that. Um, and I've had to sort out who's gone and all my pals are coming and family and who's at my table and stuff. So it is a, it is a wee bit in your mind, but um, you know, I really want a, a good result on Saturday. We've got Dundee home, pretty big game for us. You know, try to get back in track. And hopefully a wee win on Saturday and then you know, I can go and enjoy my night on Saturday with a, with a few beers and enjoy it with my, my pals and my family, mate. Suited and booted? Suited and booted, that is, aye. 
Pig and whistle tie. <laughs> oh, no chance. No chance. <laughs> Who's hosting it? No chance. Who's hosting it? You might host it. Ah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hosting it? Unsure. Unsure. Don't start It'll sending the fans to. I honestly don't know. A, well, th- a thistle legend for a thistle anybody legend. Anybody from uh, Party Fissel watching this, be available for functions and parties <laughs> after dinner speaking. <laughs> anything is gone. <laughs> very, very cheap. <laughs> uh, very. <laughs> Just a free bar, that's all you need, isn't it? As long as I get a cut of free cider thrown my way, then I'm, sure I'm happy, will. man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure you Look, Stuart, thank you very much for coming. It's a long way to finish it. Wish you well on Saturday. Hope everything goes your well. Hope you get a win. And then always if I can see right day. after my game, mate. It's the first result I'm going to look for this week, man. <laughs> Honestly, we'll have, a, we'll have a look. I'll be, I'll be working when it's coming out, and I'll just quite bash my head after the run. <laughs> ah, no, <laughs> but look, that's fine. Uh, Bans, well, thanks a lot, my thanks man. Thanks a lot, mate. Thanks Top for guy. coming in. It's been great to have you on. And uh, as always, if you could like the episode, subscribe to the channel, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks again, thanks, mate. Right. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers boys.